Hello. In this video, I want to summarise an article by Pankaj Jemawat that introduces a framework to help managers identify critical differences between geographic markets, and in doing so, avoid the overestimation of the attractiveness of foreign markets often seen with traditional analyses. This article, Distance Matters, the hard reality of global expansion, appeared in the Harvard Business Review in September 2001. Gerard begins this article with a critical view of Star TV's launch in Asia and subsequent acquisition by the News Corporation between 1991 and 1995. He suggests this move, like many others into new foreign markets, underperformed because managers had been too dazzled by the sheer size of a seemingly untapped market. Managers, as a result, lost sight of the vast difficulties of pioneering a new, very different territory. They failed to question assumptions based on the experience of their existing market. He challenges the view that information technology, global communications and other technologies have led to the death of distance and an increasingly homogeneous world. In Gemini's view, when it comes to business, this is not only an incorrect assumption, but a very dangerous one too. He argues that the problem is amplified by the analytical tools typically used in making international investment decisions. The most prominent of these being the Country Portfolio Analysis, the CPA. This tool usually maps countries using an economic variable, such as GDP per capita or per capita income, on a horizontal axis and some measure of industry or product performance, often penetration rate, on the vertical axis. Each country is then plotted, with the bubble size being used to represent a third dimension, typically reflecting total market size, perhaps represented by overall GDP or overall consumption of the product or service, if that data is available. Here is an example that Gemawat uses for the fast food industry outside the USA. Doing this analysis, you might conclude Japan, Germany, the UK and France are attractive targets for investment, or dismiss others like Mexico and Puerto Rico given their relative size and lower per capita income. However, as Gemawat points out, the emphasis driven by such an analysis is on potential sales. It ignores the cost and risk of doing business in a new market. Most of those costs and risks result from the barriers created by distance. By distance, Gemawat does not just mean geographic separation, although this is important. Distance also has cultural, administrative, or political and economic dimensions. I find it helps to think of distance here as simply differences between the firm's home nation and the foreign country or geographic area it is targeting. Gemawat is using the term distance because of the well-established link between trade flows and geographic distance found in the economics literature. He extensively cites research by economists Jeffrey Frankel and Andrew Rose, showing how factors beyond physical geographic separation, such as language, currency, policies, etc., have a greater impact on bilateral international trade. From this research, Gemmoy argues that the traditional country portfolio analysis must be tempered with a clear-eyed evaluation of the many dimensions of distance and their impact on a foreign market opportunity. To do this, he proposes his cage distance framework. Quite simply, 
looking systematically and specifically at each of four dimensions cultural distance, administrative distance, geographic distance, and economic distance. Let's quickly step through each of these. In cultural distance, GEMWAT focuses on how people interact with each other and with companies and institutions, and on their tastes and preferences. Hence, this part of CAGE pushes you to consider specific differences in religious beliefs, social norms, and language. But you need to go beyond shallow general statements and identify specific differences that will impact on that firm operating in that new country. In the article, Gemma highlights the examples of attitudes of copyright infringement and color taste in different cultures to show how some specific distances may be less obvious than others, such as food preferences and restrictions. Outside of this article, you'll find many examples where such subtle differences have been missed or ignored with serious ramifications, from cafe culture in Australia to supermarket meet and greet staff in Germany from weekly clothes washing in India to airing covers in Sri Lanka. All have specific cultural stories to tell. Turning to administrative or political distance, here the focus is on the differences in legal and regulatory requirements, policies and political systems that either deliberately or unconsciously impact on a firm's ability to enter and operate in the target industry in another country. Gemma highlights how historic connections, trade agreements, a common currency area, and political union can diminish such administrative and political distance, while other measures implemented by government can instead raise barriers. Here, we also look at differences in the nature and quality of institutional infrastructure. Take, for example, how differences, often subtle, between legal systems might impact on contracts and how well the legal system functions on their enforceability. As stated previously, geographic distance is not simply how far away a country is in miles or kilometers. Other important attributes would include the physical geography, the country's size and topography, average distances, access to oceans and waterways, as well as man-made attributes, notably transportation and communications infrastructure. Clearly, the cost and approach to transportation of bulky, fragile and perishable products will be heavily impacted by such factors of geography. But the impact of differences in, say, information infrastructure may extend even to intangible goods and services. Where there are differences to the attributes in your home country, then the approaches adopted may need modification. The final element in the CAGE framework is economic distance. Here, Gemma directs you to consider the wealth and income differences between countries. Now, while consideration of GDP per capita helps, as with other elements in CAGE, the analysis does need to drill down into the detail. So perhaps looking at economic disparities and the availability, cost, and quality of financial, human, and other resources. Differences in these areas can create barriers to the successful replication of home country success to gain greater international scale economies. Or positively, these differences could open up opportunities to exploit arbitration. Ideas that Gemwatt explored in his 2007 Harvard Business Review article 
managing differences. In the final section of this 2001 article, Jamois returns to the earlier fast food example. He explores the CPA analysis group. Here, he highlights the case of Tricor Restaurant International, TRI, it's now called the Young Brand, or just Young. It's the firm that manages Pizza Hut, Taco Bell, and the KFC fast food chain. When spun off from PepsiCo in 1997, TRI operated in 27 countries, but with two thirds of its revenue and a higher proportion of its profits coming from seven of those markets. The spin off had left it with limited cash flow and high debt servicing costs. And so the firm needs to rationalise this country portfolio. The CPA analysis shown earlier would suggest some clear countries to exit or at least scale back on. However, General Watch shows how adjustment of this view for distances radically changes the view presented. Note how the apparent attractiveness of Japan, Germany and France is reduced, but also how that of Mexico expands significantly. Also note Puerto Rico. And showing how decisions based on that initial analysis could have led to mistakes. Overall, implications are clear. Despite technology making the world a smaller place, failing to properly consider the distances between countries in an international strategy can lead to serious and very costly errors. So a short article introducing very useful and simple tools, but with so many mistakes being made in this area, the CAGE framework is an important reminder for businesses to carefully test their assumptions before committing to international expansion into new territories. Although I must stress, it is important to really dig into the specifics of each market and what they mean to your business in the use of that framework. Thank you for listening.